Welcome to What's That Pen, helping you find your next perfect pen. My name is Amanda and today we are looking at the Zebra Mild Liner brush, brush pen and marker. Now before you even go and look for this, pay attention to the fact that there are some mild liners that are not brush pens. So when you're searching, make sure that you're searching for the Mild Liner brush set instead of just their Mild Liner pen set. These pens are the 10 pack. This one was about $15 on Amazon, which is why I got this one because the 15 pack was in the 20s, $28 or something like that. So this was actually better value for your money. But if you want those other five colors, then you are gonna need to step it up to the more expensive set. So there is a 10 count set and there is a 15 count set. You can also get these in five packs where they split them into different color collections. So that's another way to go. Now, as the name implies with the mild liner, the whole point of these pens is that they are not supposed to bleed through your paper. So they're good if you're using a journal or something and you don't want it to bleed through. They have mild colors, hence the pastel range. And they also boast being water resistant, which is really nice. The ink type is a pigment-based ink, and we will open it up to take a look at the tip in a second, but one thing that's really nice about these ones is it is acid-free. So if you're wanting to do this for Bible lettering or Bible art or anything like that, something that you want to be able to pass down to others, the fact that these are acid-free makes them really nice and safe to use in your book. Let's open this setup and dive in. It is closed first of all with one of those stickers that goes all the way around but then it has the ability to reseal the set so that you can keep them in this carrying case. These hold on and sort of clip into the case there so that they will stay in a little bit and you can close it back up, stick that loop underneath and toss this set into your purse. Now to look at the colors, you can see that they are nice and light on the tips of their pens. Of course, we always like to see how well the tip of the pen corresponds with the ink color inside. That's one thing that we'll be looking at. And let's open one of these guys up to see what we've got inside. Now we have quite a large brush on this side. I'm not sure because they're not listing it whether it's a nylon brush or a felt nib. So it's likely if it's not listed that it is a felt nib, but it's definitely a brush nib. Let's look at our upstrokes and downstrokes. We want to be able to feel the pressure and I'm feeling the pen as I go up, even though the line is really still quite thin, which is something that's really nice. If you can feel that resistance, you can get really thin upstrokes and still get quite significant downstrokes with this pen. It flows quite smoothly across the page, which is really nice to see. For our thicks and thins, your thick line is relatively thick. It fills up that line well, and the thin line is very thin. The thin line is very easy to control with these pens. Wow, I'm shocked how thin that one is actually, especially compared to how thick that is. That means that you're gonna have extreme contrast between your upstrokes and downstrokes. It also means that if you're heavy handed, being able to have thin lines by default that are this thin, even if you're putting a little more pressure on it, you will still have really thin upstrokes even with a heavy hand. That's a serious bonus. For nib rebound, we go up and down and then see how well the pen bounces back to its original shape. So there is a little bit of a curve there, but it's already coming back to its original shape. And that was after quite a few ups and downs. So I would say that this pen has good nib rebound. Of course, as you're using your pen, you always wanna turn it a little bit so that you're not always pushing the tip in one direction. Now the writing size for this is a little bit harder to determine for two reasons. The downstroke is really thick 
and the upstroke is really thin. So usually a thin upstroke means, okay, you can keep it on the smaller side, but a thick upstroke means you have to put it to the bigger side. So this could be used for a range of sizes based on how thick you make those downstrokes. I would say that it's probably about a medium size for your lettering. Let's look at juiciness next. If we color in our cup and then smear, there is no smear on the page there. So they have regular juiciness. Regular because we're not getting any dry streaky lines and not wet because there wasn't too much of a smear there. Those pens that don't have much smear are always nice for lefties because you don't have to worry about pulling your hand through it. Let's look at our ease of transition. So how easy it is to go from an upstroke to a downstroke and back up again and how smooth those transition lines are. Now those transitions were super easy and the other thing I notice is that the upstroke that comes afterwards is right about the same size as the upstroke that we started with. So that means that it's bouncing back and you're able to really feel where the tip of the pen is so that you are not accidentally getting your upstrokes to be thicker as you go along. One thing that I do notice about the colors of this brush pen set is that some of the colors really stand out from the others. These ones are quite soft and gentle. And then you have others that seem almost a little bit too intense. I personally would like all of them to be more intense, but that's just because I love the brightest colors in the world. But for a pastel style set, this one's really nice. The other thing is the pens are very easy to write with. They're very forgiving. Transitions are really great. And it's not often that you see many of the colors in this collection. I would say on a scale of yay, okay, nay, or stay away, this would be a yay or okay. The drawbacks are definitely the cost per pen if you wanna get all of the colors. Sometimes these pens seem ridiculously expensive. Other times you can find them on sale, so keep an eye out for a sale. The fact that they're acid-free is a serious plus though, because you know that you'll be able to use these in lots of different places. They won't bleed through, that's also a plus. But if you want more vibrant colors, those options just aren't available with this set. So that's why I have it kind of between an okay and a yay. Hopefully in the future, the mild liner set, they might have some other colors as well, but that's just something to cross our fingers for. I think the reason that these ones seemed expensive to me, even though they're only about $1.50 per pen, is just that the colors aren't ones necessarily that I would always go to. So the fact that the colors are a little bit more muted would mean that these would be ones I wouldn't use as often, which then doesn't bring as much value to me. But if you like the gentle colors of this set, then $1.50 per pen is probably something that sounds great right about now. I mean, this. Orange is a beautiful highlighter color and $1.50 is cheaper than lots of highlighters out there. Thank you so much to the subscriber who suggested that I review these pens. Otherwise, I wouldn't have had them in my collection and I'm excited to have them in there. I'm not surprised that they're good because Zebra is known for really high quality pens and I like a lot of their brush markers that I've tried. So this one kind of seemed like a no brainer. It is a set that I'm happy to have in my stash. And hopefully if you add it to yours, you'll be happy with it too. Remember that if you have a pen that you wanna see in this series, let me know in the comments down below so that I can grab that set and we can test it out together before you spend your money on it. Let's find you your next perfect pen with no pain of any money wasted. Until next time, make sure that you subscribe to see all of the future pen reviews. And until then, happy lettering.